Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India continue our discussion with first passage and first return probabilities, uh, how to compute them and so on. So, I just recall uh, quickly that your uh, f i j 0 will be 0, because there cannot be any transition in 0 time. Then f i j 1, that means the first, the first time uh, j is reached from i in one step. So, that will simply be p i j. right? So, the first step transition probabilities are your f first, uh, first time transition probabilities also. And then for the uh, for f i j n, we wrote down this uh, formula through which we can recursively uh, compute uh, the f i j. So, you see f i j n will be p i j n minus sigma k varying from 1 to n f i j k into p j j n minus k. And I had explained last time also that you see uh, we are, uh, because p i j n uh, simply gives you the uh, probability of transitioning from i to j in n steps and it does not uh, and you in, in between you could uh, number of times have visited state j. So, all that is included here, because we were computing all possible paths from i to j. So, that may include going to j and then staying over j and so on and then going from j to somewhere and then coming back to j and all that. So, now we will want to subtract those probabilities from p i j n to compute our f i j n. And so, uh, this says that uh, here this is the first time uh, in k steps you transition from i to j uh, for the first time and then from uh, j to j in n minus k. So, this again will include you know going from j and coming back to j, but in between also you can visit j any number of times. So, this p j j n minus k and here this is uh, uh, you have already reached j in k steps and then all this is happening, because you are computing the transition probabilities up to n. So, therefore, we have to subtract. So, these particular paths we are subtracting. That means, from uh, i to uh, j, suppose you have this and then you go back here, you come back to j, then again you go back and come back to j and so on. So, n minus k steps you will be doing this, but in k steps you reach j for the first time from i. So, we have to uh, subtract the possibility of traversing all such paths from this one to be able to compute the first passage probabilities. Okay. And so, that is what we are doing. And so, I thought that I will revisit this and explain it uh, much better. Okay. Now, we can solve these iteratively uh, from these equations given the initial conditions here. The, so, uh, but then we need uh, the p i j n s are available for all n to compute this. right? So, just look at this example. Again, the job assignment problem, we have p square is this and your f 1. So, here uh, we are using the notation that now, just as uh, p is the matrix of one step transition probabilities, p square is the uh, uh, matrix of two step transition probabilities. We will also denote the, the uh, first time first passage uh, transition probabilities as by the matrix f 1, then it will be f 2 and f 3 and so on. Right? So, um, if you want to compute for example, uh, f 1 2 1, uh, you know, what am I doing here? <laughs> this is f 2 1 2. Okay. So, you want to compute the uh, uh, probability that you transition from 1 to 2 in two steps. Okay? So, this will be by the formula p 1 2 2 minus f 1 2 1 p 2 2. right? Uh, see here the formula, yes. So, therefore, you reach uh, uh, that means, the uh, one step in one step you go from 1 to 2 and then you have to stay with uh, 2, because there is only one step here. And therefore, uh, if you compute this, you get 3 by 16. right? So, now what you see is that you have to, um, uh, so therefore, now using this formula you can compute you get the matrix f 2. So, you have to compute all two step transition probabilities before you can compute uh, the three step uh, first passage transition probabilities. And for computing f 3, you would need uh, f 1, f 2 and p 3 also. That means, p 1, uh, p, p 2, p 3, f 1, f 2 you will need to compute your uh, uh, f 3 elements of f 3. right? And so, uh, this is lot of work. And so, I will give you now uh, alternative method 
of uh, computing these first passage probabilities uh, without wanting to uh, also uh, without wanting the uh, higher powers of p just the first transition matrix would be enough okay so the alternate way now the alternate way is see the what the way we explain this is now uh, look at it as uh, one step to, so f i j n we, i'm writing as sigma k varying from 1 to n p i k so you one step you transition right in the beginning you're starting from i so suppose you go to k so that probability is p i k and then from k you can uh, the first step transition probability uh, one i mean first passage transition probability k to j in n minus 1 is it okay so that means k is varying from 1 to n so of all possible states you starting from i and you may go to some other k and then from k you want to go j for the first time so here you will require n minus 1 so you see if you have already computed your fkj n minus 1 then you can compute your fijn uh, by using the first step transition probabilities and so this is a neater and more efficient way of computing your um, f i j n s right recursively. So, the argument is ok right because, because I have to move out from i to some this thing and uh, so, k should not be j obviously right uh, because I have to visit uh, j for the first time. So, but then in, uh, that means I will definitely visit some other state from i to k in one step since I want to uh, visit uh, j from i in n steps. So, in the first step I will definitely go somewhere which is state which is different from j and then I need f k j uh, to n minus 1. So, from k to j I should visit j from k for the first time in n minus 1 steps. So, uh, this is a neater way of uh, computing your uh, first passage uh, probabilities okay. and uh, now here we just need the one, uh, one step transition matrix p and of course, we are computing uh, these f k j all, all of these before I compute f i j n right. And so, here again I uh, just uh, doing the same exercise. So, if you want to compute f 2 3 2, uh, so then this will be simply uh, p 2 1. So, remember your k does not have to be, uh, so your k cannot be 3. So, k can take the value 1 and 2. So, therefore, f 2 1 f uh, p 2 1 f 1 3 plus p 2 2 f 2 3 this is all right and so uh, by get taking the values because this is all, this is only uh, uh, p13 so this is p21 p13 plus p22 p23 and you can look up looking up the values uh, in the matrix p you get this right now look at f312 f312 so here your uh, j is 1 so your k can be 2 and 3 so this will be p32 into f21 right plus p 3 3 into f 3 1 and uh, what is uh, happening is that uh, uh, what is p 3 2? p 3 2 is 1 by 4, but then what is f 2 1? f 2 1 is p 2 1. So, p 2 1 is 0. So, this is 0 then p 3 3 is 0 into f 3 1. So, this is 0. So, but then you see uh, remember if I have not drawn the diagram here, but if you remember the path 3 to 1 does not exist because you did not have the arrow from 2 to 1 in the uh, job transition this matrix yeah because this is 0. So, you do not have the arc from 2 to 1. So, therefore, this path does not exist. So, anyway this uh, uh, you cannot transition from 3 to 1 in two steps okay. first time first time from 3 to you cannot reach from 3 to 1 uh, for the first time uh, in two steps okay, in two time periods. So, uh, this is so this is definitely uh, uh, better way of computing your f i j n right. So, now once we know this then let us talk about the mean first passage times. So, uh, remember n i j we have denoted as the number of uh, transitions that you require for going from uh, uh, i to j for the first time right. So, then the mean first passage time will be expectation of the random variable n i j. Right, which you will write as n varying from 1 to infinity n f i j n. And if when you put i equal to j, then it will be m i i, which will be the mean recurrence time. And this we have said is equal to 1 by pi, okay, 1 by pi i. So, the steady state probability of being in, uh, so this is a proportion of time being in state i over the long run. So, 1 by pi i would be the mean recurrence time. 
So, that will be the time required for uh, reaching. So, on the average uh, required uh, this is the time that you will require for reaching from i to i right for the first time. Right. Now, to compute uh, m i j's you would need the first passage time distribution. So, you need to compute you know you cannot apply this formula right because you have to then hold, have all f i j n. So, again we will look at uh, a nicer way of uh, computing your mean uh, recurrence time and mean first passage times. So, uh, as we said that to compute m i j uh, by the formula where you need all f i j n up to infinity is not practical. So, let us now uh, uh, come, uh, come out with another method for computing these uh, uh, mean pass first passage times. So, you see we will condition on the state at step 1. So, see what happens is if you are computing the mean first passage time, then either the transition from i to j takes in one step. So, then this is 1 into p i j. Remember you are computing the expected value of, uh, m, uh, of the f i j n. So, uh, m i j. So, if it is one step, then probability of uh, transitioning from i to j in one step that is p i j. So, 1 into p i j. So, either we will transition from um, i to j in one step and uh, therefore, 1 into p i j or we go from i to k in the first step, right. Because uh, since it has to be uh, you know either we transition from i to j in one step or from i i go to some other state and then from k i will transition back to j. And so, then it will be uh, once I do this then the me, uh, the passage time becomes 1 plus m k j because m k j is the mean time of going from k to j and so 1 plus because one transition has already taken place. So, the mean time of transitioning from k to j for the first time will be 1 plus m k j and into the probability of transitioning from i to k, where k is not equal to j. So, this should be clear right. Okay. Now, we just rewrite this expression, because you see here you are summing with respect to k and uh, k is not equal to j. So, p i j is missing, which is uh, available from here. So, when you add up uh, uh, p i j plus sigma p i k, k not equal to j. So, this whole thing is the uh, summing up the components of uh, the ith row of the first transition matrix, which must be equal to 1, right? because from i you have to transition to one of the states. And therefore, this is 1 plus sigma m k j into p i k, k not equal to j. And we can rewrite this as summation p i k into m k j, where k is not equal to j. So, this is now again as I said the, the, the way can be computed uh, your uh, formula for f i j n. Uh, you know this is also uh, a simple way of computing your m i j without really wanting to uh, without really requiring to uh, have the whole distribution for uh, the uh, first passage probabilities f i j n right. Okay. So, um, these are n equations in n unknowns that means n unknowns means in the sense that you are asking for this m 2 j and so on m and j. Okay. So, you are asking for um, first transition passage to j from any one of the states 1 to n. So, these are n variables and uh, um, because your i is varying from 1 to n and then uh, in n unknowns, n equations in n unknowns. right? Now, um, and similarly we can also compute i i i can also be obtained this way. So, the first mean first recurrence uh, uh, mean first reference times can be also obtained by uh, solving the corresponding set of equations here. And uh, let us so just uh, work out the formula. Uh, this will be, uh, so if you want to compute m 2 3, then m 2 3 will be 1 plus and remember your uh, k is not equal to 3. So, k can take the value 1 and uh, 2. So, k, so it will be p 2 1 into m 1 3 plus p 2 2 into m 2 3. So, now uh, in order to compute m 2 3, I need m 1 3. Right. So, I will write down the formula for m 1 3. So, m 1 3 will be, so here again k is not equal to 3. So, this will be 1 plus p 1 1 m 1 3 plus p 2 3 uh, p 1 2 into m 2 3. Right. So, then uh, two equations in two unknowns and uh, we can substituting the probabilities p 2 1 p 2 2 p 1 1 and p 1 2 I get these equations. And so, it is not difficult because from here you immediately get you know like uh, half m 2 3 
is 1. So, m 2 3 is 2 immediately you get it from here and then once your m 2 3 is 2 this is half. So, this is 3 by 2 and when you bring this to this side uh, okay, let us see uh, m 2 3 is 2. So, this is 1 by 2. Uh, so, this is 1 by 2 and this is 3 by 2 and this you bring here. So, this will be half m 1 3 is equal to 3 by 2. Therefore, uh, m 1 3 is 3, it is not uh, just uh, 3 by 2, m 1 3 is 3, yes from here. Uh, you can again substitute and make sure. So, m 1 3 is 3, this is 3 by 2 and uh, m 2 3 is 2. So, this is um, uh, what is the mistake? Ha, so, this is equal to 1 plus uh, m 1 3 we are saying is coming out. So, this is 3 by 2 plus ha, tika, and this is half. So, this is 2 plus 1 3. So, m 1 3. So, therefore, that was the right uh, solution. So, this is m 1 3 is 3. Okay. Yeah, so working out uh, always helps you because you can find out your. Now, similarly, uh, let us just look at the uh, way we compute m 1 1. So, the uh, uh, first uh, mean recurrence time for uh, going from state 1 to 1. Okay. And here again your k cannot be equal to 1. So, it will be 1 plus p 1 2 m 2 1 plus p 1 3 m 3 1. And now, you need uh, m 2 1 and m 3 1. So, three unknowns are there. So, therefore, three equations m 2 1 will be uh, 1 plus uh, again your k is not equal to uh, 1. So, p 2 2 m 2 1 plus p 2 3 m 3 1 and then finally, when you write to write it down for m 3 1, it will be 1 plus p 3 2 m 2 1 plus p 3 3 m 3. And so, substituting for probabilities, I get these equations and again in very simple way you can solve and you can check that see m 1 1 comes out to be 5 by 2 and if you remember your calculations for pi 1, pi 1 was 2 by 5. So, the steady state probability of being in um, uh, uh, state 1 was 2 by 5. Right? So, the mean of first passage time will be 5 by 2. Now, m 2 1 comes out to be uh, 4 and uh, m 3 1 is 2. So, I hope this is a right calculation. Uh, because let us see if you want to do it here just verify. So, if m 2 1 is 4 then on this side is it is 1 plus 2 and your uh, m 3 1 is uh, 2. So, that is also 1. So, that is 4. Yeah, this is coming out to be high because remember there is no arc from 2 to 1. There is no direct arc from 2 to 1. So, you can of course, go from 2 to 3 then 3 to 1 uh, for the first time, but uh, so that is 2. But then uh, other paths when you go around, it will be uh, you know. Uh, so the mean passage time, mean uh, first passage time is coming out to be four, and m three one is two. Okay. So uh, now we will see. Of course, see the thing is that um, as I said when I was computing the uh, steady state probabilities and uh, uh, the mean first passage times, there are certain conditions under which uh, these are. Uh, uh, valid. And so, we now have to look at uh, the situations uh, where these things may not be valid. And in fact, uh, yeah, I had said that uh, you know uh, these may not even exist and so on. So, we will now start looking at. So, right now under certain conditions which we have to specify and we will do it uh, soon. So, I want to show you that um, uh, this will be true all these ways of calculating your uh, steady state probabilities and uh, mean passage must first passage times and mean recurrence times you will be doing it under certain conditions they are valid and when they are not valid then we have other quantities to define those states so we will talk about it so let us just recall what has been done so far see we said that limit probability x n equal to j given that x naught is i is actually limit p x n equal to j and then we defined this as pi j. So, this was the, you know, the tacit assumption that this limit exists and that it is independent of the initial state and therefore, we said that uh, you can solve these uh, pi j's through a system of linear equations. 
right and uh, that is what we did. So, but this was under the assumption that this limit exists, but now uh, uh, it is not really true that this will always exist and this is what we need to uh, now talk about and find out. So, therefore, uh, that means our uh, uh, you know the linear equation method of solving the pi i's uh, depends on whether this limit exists right and that we said that this limit is also independent of the uh, starting state and therefore, we could write down the system of linear equations and uh, say that the solution will exist uh, under the condition that sigma pi j is add up to 1 and therefore, things were simple, uh, life was easy. right? So, therefore, uh, we will now look at uh, uh, the uh, conditions under which uh, this limit exists. Okay. Second is that, so the, and the recursive formula for f i j n that we wrote down, this formula is valid. Here we are not asking for any limits or anything, because uh, the powers of p can be computed and then therefore, through that you can recursively compute your first passage probabilities. So, that is valid, but here and the, the uh, m i j again, because remember I am saying that the m i i is uh, uh, the m i i will be equal to 1 upon pi i. So, there again uh, the existence of pi i is assumed and uh, even otherwise. So, the linear equations for solving your uh, m i j's also needs to be examined under what conditions it will be uh, the, this method will be valid. right? So, um, so let us start looking at examples and then we would want to talk about uh, we start talking about the conditions. So, first uh, suppose, uh, so now you again consider the job assignment problem and uh, you see that uh, the matrix P 2 had become uh, had got all entries positive. Uh, in the first transition matrix there were some zeros in the sense that uh, you were not able to go from 2 to 1 and you did not have a loop from 3 to 3. So, you had 0 entries, but when you took the square of the matrix then all entries became positive and after that your P 3 was also all entries were positive. right? So, this implies that there is a path from remember, because this is simply a pr transition probability in two steps from i to j. So, if it is positive that means, there is a path from each i to each j and in such a case when you have a path from i to j right? and then you have also have a path from j to i, because p i j 2 is positive and p j i 2 is also positive, since all entries are positive. So, you have this, you have a path here again from j to i with positive probability. Right? Such, uh, to, uh, such a pair of states is said to communicate with each other. Okay? So, they said they are said to communicate and if uh, all states communicate with each, with each other uh, and so now, uh, because p i j 2 is positive for all i j. So, we conclude that all states uh, for the job assignment problem communicate with each other and such a chain or a pro, such a Markov chain or process is called ergodic and we will talk about this uh, some more. So, <coughs> but first let me say that. So, now what we will say is that uh, we will define a closed set as a set of states which communicate with each other and uh, for the job assignment problem it turns out that your closed set actually consists of all the states 1, 2 and 3, but uh, it is possible that you may have more than uh, 2 closed sets or 3 closed sets whatever it is all states may not form one closed set. That means, all states may not communicate with each other and now uh, let us look at this example here see this is your uh, transition diagram. Uh, so, you see that 1, 2 and 3 you can see that uh, they all communicate with each other. There is a path from 1 to 3, from 3 to 2, 3 to 1 and so on and there is a path from 4 to 5 and 5 to 4, but there is no path from 1, 2 and 3 to 4 and 5. right? And this you can of course, see the thing is that uh, I have drawn this diagram with 5 uh, states but uh, when uh, your number of states is large, uh, the transition diagram will be very big and it may not be again the same problem as I was talking about earlier that you know you cannot possibly enumerate all possible paths when you have a large number of states. Uh, so, uh, our recourse is to uh, you know taking higher powers of p. Now, so let us start and uh, of course, uh, here it is evident that uh, uh, these two sets. So, therefore, your two closed sets are uh, 1, 2 and 3 and 4 and 5. So, this chain is definitely not uh, uh, the, the all the states do not form a closed set right. And uh, 
So, let us see, let us start with P, the transition matrix. So, you see there is no arc from 1 to 4 or 1 to 5. Similarly, there is no arc from 2 to 4, 2 to 5 and from 3 to this, right. And same way, there is no arc from uh, uh, 3 to uh, 4 to 3. Uh, 4 to 1, 4 to 2, 4 to 3 and 5 to 1, 5 to 2 and 5 to 3, there is no arc. So, this is the zeros. and let us see if uh, when we uh, take the second power that means, p square, then these zeros remain intact. These probabilities change, right. The, the, these zeros may like this 0 goes away, but uh, this and then again when you take p 3, <coughs> these zeros do not go away, right. And here it becomes so, therefore, now you can say that for among the states 1, 2 and 3, the closed set 1, 2, 3, now you have path from each node to the other two nodes, because these are all positive, right. So, they all communicate. So, that means, you need at least three transition steps to um, see that there is a path from uh, each of the nodes 1, 2, 3 to the other two. And similarly, here this of course, uh, quite clear. So, this is also uh, the uh, uh, you know all the posit uh, probabilities are positive here and uh, therefore, so uh, and you see that this structure will continue no matter what higher powers you take of p right. You will continue to have zeros here and zeros here. So, therefore, uh, uh, this is a situation where uh, the uh, uh, all the states do not form a single closed set and in fact, if you have more than one closed set, we call such a chain or a process reducible. Right, and if um, <coughs> all states form a closed set, one single closed set, then it will be irreducible. So, what we have been talking about so far has been a irreducible chain, and irreducible means that all states will communicate with each other, and therefore it will also be ergodic. So, um, but again, uh, even uh, this classification is not enough. We need to. Uh, do it further and so uh, continue the discussion. So, Ingel, uh, if a single state forms a class, that means there is only one state in a class, it is called absorbing, because obviously, uh, the state is not communicating with any other state, it is just communicating with itself. So, then it is called absorbing, that is, so the once the system enters an, an absorbing state, it will not come out of it. Yeah. So, we will just look at the examples for all these, uh, uh, all these um, uh, the kinds of states that we are talking about. Now, um, uh, from the um, from the 5 by 5 matrix of the two of the uh, two closed sets, uh, we just uh, looked at this example, in which you had two closed sets as uh, for formed by the states 1, 2, 3 and the states 4 and 5. Right? Remember, there was no communication between uh, the states uh, 4 and 5 and 1 and 1, 2 and 3 and vice versa. So, these were two closed sets. right? So, um, now, the, if you look at the uh, sub matrix 3 by 3 sub matrix, see because otherwise it is all zeros. This is uh, 3, uh, yeah it was 0 and 0. Right, because there was no communication from 4 to 5. So, in the sub matrix, the entry 1 3 was by mistake written as 25 by 36, it should be 19 by 36, because all the rows, uh, the elements of any row must add up for a transition matrix, must, must add up to 1. And so, with 19 by 36, uh, the uh, numbers 1 by 6 plus 11 by 36 plus 19 by 36 add up to 1. So, make that correction and in P 3 also the same correction has to be made, because this mistake got carried over from P 3, where it was by mistake written as uh, 25 by 36 and not, not, and not 19 by 36. So, uh, you see that uh, the uh, sub matrix itself. So, now uh, <coughs> the, the case that we were talking about that uh, your uh, uh, matrix P n in the limit will converge to uh, where the rows are all identical, uh, sorry, whatever the number states k 1. So, this was a pi 1 to pi k and so on. So, all rows were identical, remember we this is the case we had uh, talked about, but now you see it has no meaning here, right, because the rows uh, these zeros will can we remain forever. So, we cannot say that the rows will become identical, well in the sense that okay, uh, these three rows will become identical maybe you can say but then uh, below here you have zeros 
right? Because again, uh, 1, 2, 3, uh, 4 and 5 are not communicating with 1 and 2 and 3. So, you will have zeros here and then you will have some uh, positive entries here. So, therefore, you cannot say that the rows will become identical, right? These three rows will become identical, exactly. That is what I want to show you that if you, this is P 3. So, P 3, this is 1 by 6, 5 by 24 and 1 by 8. So, supposedly this number will go up a little and uh, this number will also go up because you need 6 by 24 is uh, 1 by 4. No, so, you need 1 by 4. Okay. So, uh, supposedly uh, you can see that the numbers are close. Similarly, 11 by 36, 7 by 24 and uh, 1 by 3. So, 1 by 3 is 8 by 24. So, therefore, again the numbers are getting close and similarly here. So, uh, you see that means, uh, these three closed states, they themselves will satisfy the condition that the uh, steady state probabilities, uh, you, you know, you can compute the steady state probabilities and uh, here it will not matter uh, in which day the system started. Okay. But uh, to say that all the rows of the 5 by 5 transition matrix will converge to um, the same uh, values uh, would not be valid. Okay. <coughs> Now, again uh, this uh, big example I have taken from Ravindran, Phillips and Solberg and so this is a, a 8 by 8 transition matrix and uh, the uh, diagram I have drawn uh, on the other board and uh, see I have written down this matrix though I am not making use of it right now, but uh, it will be a good exercise for you people also to sit down and try to, if you can write a small, I am sure uh, from MATLAB and so on if you uh, feed this matrix, you can get uh, different powers of the matrix. So, it is not too much of a, uh, a problem getting higher powers and then whatever I am saying, you can also uh, conclude the same things by looking at higher powers of P. But in any case, uh, if we draw the transition diagram, it will look something like this, right. And I am not writing down the probabilities because they are here and anyway, it will clutter up the uh, diagram. We just need to look at the connections and whatever I am concluding from that is enough. I do not need the probabilities really, except that this uh, P 6 6 is 1, right. So, uh, fine. So, now, um, if you just glance at this transition diagram, um, then you will see that 4, 5, 8 are connected, 3, 7 are connected and you may say that 2 and 6 are connected, right. But then when you go further, you see that there is no uh, arc from 6 to 2 and you at uh, so when you reach 6, then uh, the probability of coming back to 6 is 1. So, this is a certain event. So, that means once the system comes to state 6, it just stays there and so 6 is a absorbing state, right. And so, this is not a closed set because uh, closed set 2 and 6 should communicate and 6 and 2 communicate. So, there is an arc from 2 to 6, but there is no arc from 6 to 2, right. So, this is not a closed set. So, therefore, uh, you have two closed sets which are 4, 5, 8 and 3 and 7, that for sure, because you have an arc from 3 to 7 and 7 to 3, right. Now, um, 1 and 2 do not figure, therefore, uh, this is not a closed set. So, uh, states 1 and 2 do not figure in any of the closed sets and such states we define as transient, because uh, see uh, what will happen is that so first of all they are transient and since you have more than one state closed state uh, in the system therefore uh, this is a reducible system okay so that is uh, another thing now thirdly um, once um, the system enters a closed set suppose so for example it enters state 5 or 4 then you see it will keep hopping among these states only there's no way of going out there is no arc which is going out of 4, 5 or 8. So, your system will then for infinite number of times uh, go on hopping uh, among the states 4, 5 and 8. And so, such states we will call as recurrent, because they will keep occurring again and again. Right. So, the moment a system enters the closed set, then there is no way of going out, right. Because if this communicated with any other state, then you would, uh, that will also form part of the for example, if 1, if 4 communicated with 1, then this will become a closed set. So, that is not true. So, once you enter a closed set, you cannot get out of it. Okay. And similarly here, if you come to 3, then you will go on going from 3 to 7 or 7 to 3. That is all. You will just go round and round or uh, because there is no loop here either, 
there is no loop here. So, you will continue doing it right. And from here, if you come to uh, 2 and then you go to 6, then you get, uh, just stay put in uh, state 6, you do not get out of it. Okay. So, um, uh, first of all now, uh, after defining the recurrent state, transient state and an absorbing state, you have the closed sets. Uh, what we want to say is that each closed set, if you look at this itself behaves like now a irreducible Markov chain. So, a sub, ch sub chain of the whole system, which is irreducible, right, ergodic uh, in the sense that if you just consider this. And similarly, if you consider the uh, chain consisting of states 3 and 7, then they together form a irreducible chain and this is uh, both of them 3 and 7 communicate with each other. right? And so, uh, talk about, uh, so further um, classification is needed. Okay. So, now I will give you another classification of uh, these um, uh, uh, states in terms of first passage probabilities. And that will also give you a good understanding and of course, another alternate way of uh, de determining whether a state is uh, recurrent or transient or whatever it is. So, now um, let us define f i as the probability that starting in state i, the process will sometimes return to state i for the first time, right. Because f i i n was the <coughs> probability that uh, it returns to state i from i for the first time in n steps and transitions. So, now when we add up this from 1 to infinity, this will give us the probability of uh, the system returning to uh, starting from i returning to i for the first time um, any in any number of steps, right. So, all possible. So, therefore, this is will sometimes return to state i, right. So, that is important. <coughs> so, this is the probability. Now, we say that state i is recurrent if f i is 1. So, that means there is a a positive probability or uh, that there is a, it is a certain event that the system will sometimes uh, return to itself, to, to the state i from which it started. So, if f i is 1, then it is a certain event, right. But if uh, f i is less than 1, then it is a transient state, right. And um, so, now you can, you can interpret this as saying that you see if f i is 1, that means, the uh, system will return. So, starting from i, it will return to itself after some time. And then, um, because it is a Markov process, memory less, that means, the past history is not uh, uh, to be considered, then you will again, the, so the whole process starts fresh and then you will again go, uh, go to other states and so on and then come back again to i. And so, every time you come back, the system starts fresh and since your f i is 1, therefore, you will keep coming back to uh, i uh, infinite number of times. So, therefore, uh, the way to characterize this is a recurrent state that means, is that uh, once you uh, come to i, then you will keep coming back to i an infinite number of times. But for a transient state, see what is happening is, since your f i is less than 1, 1 minus f i is positive. So, this is, this is the probability that the system will not return to state i. Okay. And so, if this is a positive probability, then we will say that this event will also occur. So, um, therefore, we want to interpret this as saying that uh, a transient state will be visited only a finite number of times. And so, that will be the dif difference between a recurrent state and a transient state. So, let us just interpret this. Now, you see if the system is in state i for exactly n periods starting in i and you are exactly uh, for n periods uh, you uh, or uh, visit the state i again for n periods n times, then the probability of that is f i raised to n minus 1, right. Because f i is the probability of x returning to state i. So, that into n minus 1. And again, uh, the, these are independent probabilities. So, that is why I am raising it to f i raise to n minus 1, because of the Markov process, the Markov property. And then, uh, it does not come back to itself. So, for what, so I am computing the probability that exactly for n periods, it has visited uh, state i, starting from i. I mean, this is, I am writing down the conditional probability of starting in state i, and then visiting it for exactly n times. Uh, so, uh, being in state for n times. So, it already started in state i. So, now it needs to revisit state i n minus 1 times. So, this is the probability of 
revisiting state i n minus 1 uh, n times starting and then 1 minus f i is the probability that it will never come back after that. Right? Now, this is and for n greater than or equal to 1, this is now uh, this are the probabilities from a geometric distribution if you recall. So, what we are saying is that um, uh, coming to itself uh, is a, uh, a failure and then not coming to itself is a success. Remember, so you are asking for the probability uh, in n trials, you are asking for the, uh, well, okay. uh, here this is uh, the, the uh, oh, okay. the best way to say it is that this is not coming to itself. So, that happens once and then this is coming back to itself n minus uh, uh, n times uh, or coming back to itself, it is n minus 1, because it is starting in i, but it has been in state i for exactly n periods. That is, so there are two different things I am saying. So, therefore, here you are saying revisiting itself uh, n minus 1 times. So, therefore, f i is to n minus 1. Now, uh, when you want to compute the mean for this uh, distribution, then uh, it will be, um, that means, uh, n now varies from 1 to infinity and you compute the mean then it will be n times 1 minus f i into f i raised to n minus 1 right and uh, here you can take 1 minus f i outside so sigma n f i n minus 1 and this is a geometric distribution f i is less than 1 so this is convergent and this is the arithmetic geometric series you should all know how to uh, evaluate it we have done it in the beginning of this course and so uh, the sum is 1 upon 1 minus f i whole square and so divided multiplied by 1 minus f i. So, this is it. So, there is a finite, this is a finite positive number. That means, the uh, uh, average of a, you see if, if it was to visit itself infinite number of times, the mean will not be uh, finite, but here it is the mean is finite. So, that means, you can again interpret this as saying that uh, the state will not be revisited uh, infinite number of times, only a finite number of times it will be uh, revisited. Okay. Now, another way of characterizing a recurrent state. Yeah. So, you see that uh, we have been uh, trying to uh, talk about the same thing in different ways and uh, that certainly helps you to understand the things better. So, now let us uh, define um, i n as 1 if x n is i. That means, if at the nth time the system is in state i and 0 otherwise. Right? So, this is a um, uh, indicator uh, variable and uh, then if you add up sigma i n from 0 to infinity, this will represent the number of periods that the process was in state i. So, starting from uh, state 0, um, uh, sorry from uh, time period 0 or the initial time, uh, then this will count the number of times. Uh, the system was occupying state i. right? And uh, now, if you want to con compute this conditional expectation uh, that is given x naught is i, you want to compute sigma i n and varying from 0 to infinity um, the expectation. So, I will uh, uh, exchange the summation sign. That means, if, if this thing is finite, that means, if this exists, then obviously, uh, I can exchange the expectation. So, this is also convergent. That is all. I'll that is all I need to uh, interchange. Um, so, therefore, uh, this is um, expected value of i n given x naught is i, which but i n uh, is equal to 1 if x n is i. So, therefore, this is probability uh, x n equal to i into 1, right. When you conditional probability of x n given i given that x naught is i. So, 1 times that you will write down and this we by our definition is p i i raised to n. Yeah. So, therefore, summation and varying from 0 to infinity p i i n. So, um, you want to say that uh, uh, sigma i n n varying from 0 to infinity uh, represents the number of periods that the process is in state i. So, now if, um, uh, so okay, once you have computed this, then a proposition immediately follows. The proposition says that if state i is recurrent, that is state i is recurrent, if this is infinity, right? Because this is the expected value, and if um, uh, our definition is that uh, the recurrent state will uh, keep re revisiting itself infinite number of times, so then the expected value will also be infinite, right? So therefore, this will be uh, infinity, and for transient, this has to be less than infinity, right? So another way of looking at it. Now, see. Um, 
uh, interesting outcome from here is that if uh, uh, if if the number of states number of states is finite see that is important is finite okay so the number of states is finite then all states of the process cannot be cannot be transient okay sorry cannot be transient all states cannot be transient and why because if um, a transient state can be visited only a finite number of times and you have finite states let's say you have the number of states are 1 2 and k you have k states now uh, this is a, if all are transient so this can only be visited let's say a t1 number of times this can be visited only a t2 number of times and this can be revisited only a k number of times a t k number of times right and now you take max max of t1 plus uh, t, uh, sorry t1 t2 and t k take the maximum of this define this as capital t and then now uh, when you consider the time t plus 1 t plus 2 what happens because uh, all the transient states have already been visited you cannot uh, revisit but the process has to go on the process has to be in some state at time t plus 1 t plus 2 right so this is a contradiction because uh, if you have only finite number of states and all are transient uh, they will all get visited uh, their finite number of times and after that beyond that time period the process is going on so where does it go it has to transit to one of the states so therefore um, in a finite process uh, finite process we mean finite number of states uh, all states cannot be transient right so therefore immediately the question uh, is asked um, if if the number of states is not finite then is this possible that all states may be transient and yes so we will also look at an example and we have already uh, done uh, looked at such a process but we did not really talk about uh, this aspect of the process at that time so yes if there are number of states are infinite then uh, uh, the uh, all the states may be transient